All right, I'm Doug, and you're inside the cargo hold of Sailing Vessel Seeker, and over there is uh, Evan, and we are gluing in more insulation this week, and we're also doing some work in the pilot house. Check it out. Fun with Evan and caulking. Essential Craftsman? Scott Wadsworth, the Essential Craftsman. building a house, huh? Yeah, he's got a, a, whole, a whole series of... Out of the well. huh. Look at this. Boy, it's sitting out there on the street. Ain't that birdie? Yeah, I bet that makes a lot of noise. Got a little creative work to get the bracing in there, but sometimes you just gotta hold the foam up a bit. So clamp some things in, make it work. hot down in there so there's the shape we want we just got to bend a pipe to it Nineteen. Right. it looks like it's gonna come it's coming in now yeah but we're not but half where we need to be so we could either do another one here or there it's almost like it made a triangle with it I think, yeah. it, I think it's just leave it like that. It's just going to come out, and we'll just cut it and weld it into the to the roof at an angle. job the second time. That damage is from the die pressing into it. Newport Shipyard taught you how to weld. Yeah, six, they have a, like, a six month program. Kind of how long it takes so you. you were Navy? No, I was, uh, that was as a civilian. So all, the, all the new construction is done by civilians. Yeah, that's right, that's right. So Navy doesn't do anything they anymore. They trained so. us in State Big, Flex Corps, Pulsar. I eventually got trained in TIG if I stayed with it, but I moved out here instead. Wow. So all positions, all thickness for carbon steel. Yeah. Pretty much all over. That's awesome. I did not know that. First time aluminum. It's like one of all right, yeah, you can weld on my boat. Yeah, just to put that on the calendar right there. That's a good calendar shot. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta get a SB Seeker Lady calendar. That's right. The men of SB Seeker. Yeah, I didn't tell you how. I made most of my money. <laughs> <laughs> We 
refitting it, they replaced the deck with synthetic teak. And what's this channel's name? Uh, Abandoned Comfort. All right, I just love the curve on that pipe. That looks beautiful. There you go, Joe. You hot? Thunderstorms are getting ready to roll in. I just remembered I have two pipes that feed a lot of water into the pilot house now, so made some plugs. Okay, good. That's a nice looking weld. This is our cardboard template from the pilot house where the pulleys go. And we're using it to line up these pulleys just roughly. So we know where to put these little stanchions that he's making in there. Well, he's got a face on it now. He's putting, he's cutting it to length or facing it down to length. And then we'll drill them. There'll be hold offs for this second plate and then a bolt goes through the pulley. About there, about there. You know, I know it's not for everybody, but I really do like the organic shape. You know, a bracket should just always be squarish. Well, I went and moved those pulleys, so we're going to have to glue some more aluminum back onto here for the sheet clamp. Actually, it's a sheet clutch. So what's going to happen is sheet clutches like this, this is just one of them. Another one gets mounted here to take the uh, forward, what are those? This is the forward uh, sheets, port and starboard. These two are the halyards, and then there's one more that goes here that takes the main sheets. These are V-Grip Plus uh, clutches. The, the nice thing about a clutch is you can actually uh, have them locked in and pull the sheet in some more or you can open it up while the sheet's under load and drop it. Now that's not the great way of doing it, but heck, when you're in trouble, that's, uh, that's your brakes on a sailboat. Drop both sails and you'll come to a stop. DHL, more coins. All right, I gotta say a huge thank you to you guys. Thank you very much for your support of these other channels. Uh, we have two new channels to add to our coin collection, uh, Brewpeg and Zora. Uh, Zora is in Ireland. This is Reese. He's doing his job. Got a beautiful Irish colors there on that coin. And Brewpeg, group down in Australia, so very internationally represented. Lovely iceberg on the front. And they're saying is, be bold, go where the others don't. Brewpeg, since 1974, they actually got this boat. Um, it, was, it's, it was operated on the coast there, and then it sank, and they've rebuilt it from that condition. And Zora, the saying on this one is, a ship is safe in port, but that's not what ships are for. Uh, Reese, you'll love watching him too. So support these channels if you would. Uh, it's, it's a lot of work making these videos and these guys are just getting their starts. So this will help them out. And if you buy these coins for $20 each, $15 of that goes to this boat. We send them the cash. The other five bucks uh, handles the, the cost of the coin. So we appreciate that and thank you very much for that, uh, doing that. It's really kind of you to do so. And if you have a coin already or you would like, you can now get a keychain. This is available on our website. 
so it uh, it opens up and locks around that coin so you can carry it with you. A little bit of inspiration for your day. Okay, back into the cargo hold. It's a Tormach Rapid Turn. It's essentially a lathe for the uh, CNC mill. And I just got the full package so it has all the little parts and pieces to it. And we're going to part with the old Grizzly. And that's the other thing that's going to go. We're going to sell off our CNC machine. It uh, takes a full 4x8 sheet of uh, plywood or steel on it. And um, it's got to go. When you start piling junk on top of something, you're not using it. Uh, it's nice to have a clean shop. Evan and I cleaned up the shop in the pilot house. Hey, maybe Chucky2009 would like the CNC machine. He could give it another try. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, it's a beautiful room, all set up in here. You know, I like CNC machines, but if you don't make something you know, like one part over and over, they just don't, you know, are making signs like Richard Day does. You know, that's a good use for it, or making patterns or woodworking, that sort of thing. Uh, I don't think we'll do that kind of woodworking in here. Uh, we want to keep it simple so we get it done quicker. And, uh, yeah, it's time to part with that machine. Okay, we're trying to get the big pieces in, the big ceiling pieces and big wall pieces. Got the uh, aft companionway all braced up here for the glue to dry overnight so all that can come out. Just a lot of persistence. I tell you, that's what it takes to build these boats. Oh, we're going to have another coin coming online too. Uh, Ross with uh, Life on the Mole. Talking about persistence. When you're building a fiberglass boat, it's the same thing over and over. That's what it takes. Every Talking about persistence, let's go see what Bart's doing. Washed it in rain the other day. Yeah, you did that. That's a bit, oh, that looks good. So you just got that center section to do yet. Yeah. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. This is uh, plastic, you said? It kind of looks like yes. burlap. It's impregnated plastic. It don't burn it. You know what? It's, it's almost like uh, that uh, shade cloth I have on the house over there. It is shade cloth. It's for basically... Really? Chain link fencing. Yeah. Oh. And how much does it cost? Oh, it's a hundred bucks for the 50, whole roll. Fifty by ten roll. Fifty by ten for hundred bucks. Yeah. Gee, that's cheap. That's a brilliant idea. Like yeah. a headliner for a car. Yep. Never mind about it. I forgot the goddamn measurements. That's one of our deck hold down nuts. Uh, so we'll use it from underneath too if we need to. They're all along here because they're up on the deck as well. You don't need much instruction for doing foam. It's just tedious and cut it and cut it again, fit it in. Uh, there's lots of other ways of doing this. You can spray in foam, you can put in pins and put in uh, wool, you can uh, you can do nothing. You can put in uh, uh, micro spheres into your paint. You can do all kinds of things to insulate a boat. The thing is you do want to insulate it because it will uh, it will condense moisture on the hull uh, until you get below the water line for a while. So, uh, and then it's also good for sound abatement and other, and well, just keep it cooler and warmer inside. It evens out the temperature. So it really helps in a steel boat for us to be working in here in the summer. It makes a big difference. But you know, do it the way you want to do it. Do it what works cheap for you. These boards that we're putting in are are uh, twenty dollars a piece. So it ain't cheap this way, but. There's more expensive ways. And if you get somebody that's going to spray it in, make sure they've done a boat before because I called one guy here in town. It's like, you know, they've done houses, but a boat kind of freaked them out, and rightly so, because there's all these nooks and crannies. And then if you do spray it in, you got to clean it all up. Uh, we're going to use a mix, uh, I think, up in the pilot house. Just, you know, spraying foam does give you some structural uh, integrity. And I want to take some of the oil canning out of the uh, pilot house roof. So we're going to probably mix a two part and pour it in and uh, we're still thinking about that but that's coming you now so once this glue sets up we just we take out the supports and make sure we got all the seams 
sealed up and we got a lovely vapor barrier then. Two layers of it actually.